morning, everyone. We want to welcome you to worship this morning at St. Matthew's United Methodist Church. My name is Adam. I'm one of the pastors on staff. Whether you're worshiping with us in person this morning or worshiping with us online, we are so excited to have you with us this morning. If you are a guest with us today, we want to say a special word of welcome to you. If you would stay after this morning's service, go out the back sanctuary doors and to the left, there's a welcome table there where we would love to greet you and give you a gift to thank you for being with us today. Uh, one of the things we've been asking every week for you to help us in inviting others is if you are watching online or even if you're sitting here in person, if you're on Facebook, please take just a moment to share this on your Facebook page as a way of inviting your friends and family to join in worship with us. Inside your worship guide, there are a few announcements that we want to lift up today. Uh, first off, we are so uh, brokenhearted to announce the passing of Glenn Hamrick. We sent out that out in the prayer chain this week. But you see there in the worship guide the arrangements for his celebration of life uh, that will be this Wednesday, 2 p.m. at St. John's United Methodist Church. But all the information and the address is there. We uh, hinted at this last week, but want to remind you again and let you know that these plans were finalized for uh, the day at the Fraser, the learning opportunity uh, on Saturday, February 26th at 10 a.m. Uh, we'll be doing together a guided tour of an exhibit called West of Ninth, Race, Reckoning, and Reconciliation. And then if everything holds out and, and hopefully COVID numbers uh, go down, we also hope to uh, plan a lunch immediately after that so that we go to the exhibit together and then go to lunch together and discuss uh, the things we've learned that morning. Uh, to sign up, you do that by email. And there is a cost attached to this. For adults, it's $15 and for children, $7. Uh, one more quick announcement. Our youth group uh, were a part of the Winter Blitz event that our annual conference hosts uh, every year. And as a part of that, they had a mission opportunity where they uh, fixed uh, baskets of snacks for healthcare heroes to take to our local hospitals uh, for nurses and doctors and hospital staff there. The, one of those baskets is actually in Wesley Cafe this morning. They left it there so that if you as the congregation would like to help them in writing notes of encouragement to health care heroes, they would like to compile all of those notes together so that when they deliver those baskets, they can take those notes with them. So those will be there all morning, again, in Wesley Cafe. And uh, we want to thank our youth uh, for their heart in reaching out uh, to health care heroes during this challenging time. Well, those are all the announcements I have this morning. We want to have our waving greeting time together. Uh, so take a moment just to wave at each other, do some air high fives, air fist bumps, greet each other, wave at those around you, wave at those worshiping at home on the camera. And as you finish doing that, let's prepare our hearts for worship with our opening prelude. Please stand for the call to worship. Like Elijah, O oh God, we turn and face you in the midst of the storm. Help us this hour to hear you speak to us, not in the wind or the thunder, nor even in the upheaval of the ground beneath us. Help us to hear you speak to us in our heart of hearts as that still, small voice amid the turmoil and confusion which gives us direction and peace and hope. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
standing and join me in our statement of faith, which comes this morning from the United Church of Canada. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the Church to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. We want to continue to worship by giving of our tithes and offerings this morning. If you're here worshiping with us in person, you can do that in the back of the sanctuary and the offering plates there as you leave. Or if you go on our website, stmatthewsmethodist.com, you can also see instructions there on how to set up text to give, mailing in your offering, or giving online directly at our website. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we give this morning. God, we just proclaim together one of the most beautiful promises of our entire faith. That regardless of what we face in this life, even as we face the valley of the shadow of death, we can trust that we are not alone. You are with us always. Jesus, you've promised that you will never leave us or forsake us. God, we pray that that abiding promise of your presence would be transformative in our lives and that it would change the way we live, the way we give, the way we serve, the way we share the blessings that we have with others. God, we pray that you would bless our tithes and offerings today, that they would be used for your kingdom and your glory, that the ministries of our church might be another reminder in our lives and in the lives of others that you are with us no matter what. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Amen. You can be seated. Let's go to the Lord in prayer this morning. God, today we have confidence in coming to you in prayer because we trust that before we ever reach out to you, your grace is already reaching out to us. God, we think about all the way back in the beginning of creation, how you came to Adam and Eve in the garden and you came searching for them in their brokenness and their sin and, and you asked, where are you? And God, we think about Elijah in our scripture reading today and how he found himself burned out and overwhelmed and on the run and fearing for his life and you came to Elijah in the cave. And you asked him almost the exact same question. What are you doing here, Elijah? Holy Spirit, search for us today. Seek us out. Ask us deep in our souls as we enter into this time of prayer. God, ask us, where are we? What are we doing here? Maybe even, what are we hiding? What are we struggling with? What are we running from? Help us to know, God, that you are already seeking us, reaching out to us, wooing us in your love, and drawing us close to you. God, with that confidence, we bring to you all the burdens that are on our hearts today. God, today we pray for those who are sick, and it feels like there are so many. We ask for your healing touch upon their lives. We ask for comfort for mind, body, and spirit. We ask God for renewal and strengthening in the lives of those who are suffering and surround them with your love and your peace. God, we pray for those who are giving care for others who are sick. Sustain them by your strength. Give them your peace and your patience. God, we pray along with our youth for all of those who are health care workers right now who feel so burned out and in many ways so forgotten. We pray, God, your blessing upon them. We're so grateful for the way they serve and give of themselves to care for others. God, today we pause to pray for those who are grieving who maybe even since the last time we worshiped together lost loved ones. We trust in your word, God, that says you are near to the brokenhearted and you save those who are crushed in spirit. So God, surround these with your love and your presence. Wrap your arms around them and carry them during this time of loss and grief. God, we pray for guidance and discernment in our lives. In so many areas of our lives where we're trying to find the direction to go, trying to make the right decision, trying to figure out on our own what is best, we pray, God, that instead of just trusting in, in our own wisdom or our own strength, that we would turn to you and depend on you. God, we pray that as your word promises that you will give wisdom to those who ask, God, we are asking for your wisdom in, in all the different challenges and situations that we face. God, whatever it is that's on our hearts today, we lift those situations and those people up to you, and we ask for your grace for each one, for each situation. God, bind our hearts together in your love now. Draw us together as your people. Make us one as the body of Christ. As we pray together these words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's continue that prayerful attitude as we stand and sing this next hymn together.
Please remain standing for this morning's scripture lesson, which comes from the first Kings, the 19th chapter. And the word of the Lord came to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I'm the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. This morning we are continuing our sermon series, Lessons from the Struggle Bus. And you will remember that last week we talked about how with all the different challenges we're facing in our world, uh, everything from an ongoing pandemic to students being back in NTI to the overall feelings of being overwhelmed and exhausted, that it just feels like nothing is normal and that no one is okay. So it's really important in this series that we focus on how God is with us and God is working even in the midst of our struggles and our messes. To help us in this journey, uh, we began last week focusing on the life of the prophet Elijah. Uh, You'll remember that where we left Elijah in his story last week, he was afraid for his life. He was on the run from King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. He had literally laid down under a tree and was waiting to die. And we heard last week his raw, honest, unfiltered prayer. He prayed to God, I've had enough, Lord. 
take my life. I'm ready to go to the grave and be with my ancestors. And kind of the main takeaway from last week was that if Elijah can pray that, if Elijah can have that kind of trust in his relationship with God to be that brutally honest, then we can too. And we want to have that kind of confidence in prayer. So I hope that this week you had the opportunity to take last week's action step of telling God what you're really feeling, not the edited or made-for-TV version of your prayer, what you're really feeling and what you need right now. Well, this week we're going to move forward and focus on Elijah's second prayer in 1 Kings 19, a little bit of a different prayer. Uh, It's a prayer of loneliness, a prayer of isolation, and a prayer of fear. Elijah prays in verse 10, Lord, I'm the only one left. I'm the only one left. And when I hear that prayer, I think that there may be no better words to capture our frustrations and our exhaustion specifically related to this pandemic that we're in. You know, regardless of what side of the issues you're on, right, masks or no masks, pro-vaccine or anti-vaccine, NTI or in-person school, government mandates or personal choice, I guarantee that there is one thing that unites us in all of this. Because I guarantee that there has been some time in the last 22 months that you have had at least one of these thoughts. Uh, Maybe you've had all four of these just this week, but I want you to think, when have you had these thoughts? I'm the only one who cares. Second one, I'm the only one who gets it. Does nobody else understand? Number three, what is wrong with the rest of these people? Or number four, my personal favorite, I've used this at least twice this week that I can think of, has everyone else lost their minds? You know, there have been so many times that it really has felt like the world's going to hell in a handbasket. You've heard that saying before. And what we've learned, I think, is that isolation plus fear is a really dangerous combination. Isolation plus fear has likely left all of us on the struggle bus in some way. And so we want to ask again this week, what can we learn from Elijah's experience on the struggle bus that will help us here and now in our own journey? Inside your worship guide, you'll find a GPS, a grow, pray, and study guide where you can fill fill in the main points of this morning's message and follow along there. There are also scripture readings, again, continuing in 1 Kings, lots of Psalms still in there, again, focusing on being honest and open with God in prayer. And so we invite you to read with us this week as we read uh, Scripture as a church family together. The first lesson, the first point there in your GPS, when we're afraid, it's easy to feel alone. When we're afraid, it's easy to feel alone. You know, where we pick up in Elijah's story this week, he's still on the run. Uh, Our scripture tells us that angels had ministered to Elijah. He had that powerful spiritual experience of having a nap and a snack. And so then strengthened by that rest and that food, scripture tells us he travels for 40 days and 40 nights through the wilderness to reach Mount Horeb. Most scholars believe that what's referred to as Mount Horeb here was actually another name for Mount Sinai, uh, the holy mountain where Moses received the law back in the book of Exodus. So I want you to understand that there's this feeling here that Elijah is running from something, right? He's running for his life. However, there's also a sense that he's running to something. He's almost making a pilgrimage to one of the most holy places in our faith. And after traveling for 40 days and 40 nights, he spends the night in a cave And an angel appears to him, and like we were praying in our prayer, the angel asked Elijah, what are you doing here, Elijah? Now, I promise you that if you came back this week, you would get to hear Elijah be even whinier than before, and I plan on delivering on that promise this week. So the angel asked, what are you doing here, Elijah? And starting in verse 10, Elijah recounts all the things that have gone wrong to him recently. It's a long litany of complaints. The Israelites have rejected the covenant. The altars have been broken down. 
They're putting prophets to death by the sword, and Elijah ends his litany with the worst one. I'm the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. The funny thing about Elijah's pity party and this prayer, I'm the only one left, is that if you read the scripture, it's not even factually true. In the chapter right before this one, Elijah was actually a part of a plan to hide 100 of the Lord's prophets in caves to keep them safe. And then right after this chapter, God tells Elijah that there are actually 7,000 people in Israel that were still faithful to God and had not worshipped false gods. And so there's a lot of evidence to show that Elijah probably had to know in reality that he wasn't really the only one left, but that didn't change the fact that he sure did feel like it. And again, it brings us back to this idea that there are some really dangerous combinations in life. You know, I think about some of those things that are just volatile and should not be mixed. Fire and gasoline, right? We would say those two things do not play well together. Drinking and driving, dinner and politics. As Pastor Rene found out this week, trying to get work done and listening to the Encanto soundtrack doesn't go well together, or UK and U of L fans. Not a good mix, right? And in the same way, fear and isolation are a dangerous combination. And maybe this morning you can think about a place in your life where you feel like you're the only one, and maybe in your head you, you know that's factually not true. But because you're so isolated, because you're in this kind of tunnel vision mode, your feelings still feel so real. And we really want to offer that to God this morning, that when we're afraid, it's easy to feel so alone. That actually leads us to our second lesson from the struggle bus, though the counterpoint to this is that God is with us even when our circumstances don't change. This is a very specific point. God is with us even when our circumstances don't change. Now, out of all the weeks that we're going to be focusing on Elijah's journey, this is probably the part of our scripture that you may be the most familiar with, God speaking to Elijah in the still, small voice. But just to summarize, right, Elijah was waiting to hear a word from the Lord, and there comes a powerful wind. But the scripture says God wasn't in the wind. And then after that, there was an earthquake, a a ground-shattering earthquake, but God wasn't in the earthquake either. Finally, there was a consuming fire, and God wasn't even in the fire. Right? All these big, dramatic, loud signs that you would expect God to be in. And yet instead, the scripture ends by saying there was a gentle whisper, and in the whisper, God spoke to Elijah. Now, any sermon I've heard on these passages talks about this part of the story like it just fixes everything. Right? That, that God speaks to Elijah in a gentle whisper, and it's like a, a magic wand just waves over the whole scene, and all of a sudden the darkness is turned to light. And it kind of gives this message that if you listen for God's gentle whisper in your life, it will make things all better for you too. The problem is that's not how the story goes. If you read the rest of this chapter of 1 Kings 19, after the wind and the earthquake, and the fire, and the still small voice, Elijah doesn't change his tune at all. Listen to his prayer again. He's like a broken record. And in verse 14, he repeats exactly the same words as before. I'm the only one left, God, and they're trying to kill me too. Now maybe you're thinking to yourself, well, how in the world does that help me? How does Elijah, still feeling isolated even after this miraculous experience, give me any hope at all? Well, here's the hope for me. I think it teaches us that one experience with God isn't necessarily going to give you the faith or the life you've always wanted. I think it teaches us that you can have an amazing religious experience and still have doubts. You can seek to be faithful and listen for God's voice and still feel lonely or still fall flat on your face. You can be on the mountaintop one moment and feel like you're in the darkest valley 
in a moment that's just a heartbeat away. And I think the good news of these verses is that in that roller coaster of life, of faith and doubt, of seeking and questioning, that doesn't mean something's wrong with you. It doesn't mean you're weak, or it doesn't mean that you're not faithful. This just means that a life in faith is a journey. It's a long process of change. It is not an instant fix. And for me, the good news of this is that God doesn't lose sight of us even when we lose sight of God. God is with us and God is working in our lives even when our circumstances don't change. God's grace continues to reach out to us and sustain us and draw us near to God even when we're on the struggle bus. The Apostle Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verses 35 through 37, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. And then Paul gives the answer. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. This reminds us that one of the greatest promises of our lives, a promise that we proclaim together in our affirmation of faith this morning, is that God is with us. We are not alone. Well, that brings us to our invitation this morning. And as we move into our invitation, I want to remind you, like we did last week, that every week there's going to be an action step, uh, something intentional. We want to invite you to do as an act of faith during the week. Uh, last week's action step was to tell God what you're feeling and what you really need right now. Uh, this week's step, I'll be honest with you, I think is, is even more challenging than that one. Uh, this week's step is intentionally designed to maybe coax us just a little bit out of our loneliness, a little bit out of our isolation, and draw us into community. So instead of telling God this week's action step, you can fill it in there in your GPS, is to tell someone. Tell someone about a struggle you're having as a way of discovering that maybe you aren't as alone as you feel. So last week was to tell God. This week is to tell someone else. You know, this week I had the opportunity to meet with some friends in ministry. And as a part of our gathering together, uh, like we do in many of our meetings here in the church, we shared glory sightings and praises and prayer requests just as a way of checking in with each other. How are you doing? How is it with your soul? And as we shared together, like in any group, uh, there were personal struggles, there were family struggles, there were work struggles. Uh, there were feelings of being isolated, feelings of being overwhelmed, people were angry, people were sad. Uh, there were all kinds of different prayer requests, prayers for friends, prayers for family, prayers for spouses, prayers for school and NTI and balancing the roller coaster of life. And as we shared together, as maybe you've experienced in small groups before, this amazing thing happened as we shared. I didn't feel so alone. And as other people were sharing, I realized, you know, other people were having some of the same feelings that I had had. And our experiences may not have been identical, but we were able to share together and connect together and walk through these things together in relationship and in community. And during that time of sharing, I'm happy to tell you that not one person in that group looked at me and said, sorry, Adam, you're the only one who's experiencing that, you know? Not one person said to me, you're just a weirdo, Adam, and what you're going through is totally unique to you, and there's nothing we can do to help. No, people understood, and people empathized, and people said, you know, I felt the same way. Often I've gone through some of the same things. You are not the only one. As our teaching team discussed this step, though, of telling others, like I said, we realize that in some ways it is harder than last week. You know, you could kind of trust last week that in telling God, God wasn't going to tell anybody else. You know, God would keep that in confidence with you in prayer. And this week, you have to find someone to talk to. You have to find someone you trust. And that may be hard to find. And we realize that. 
However, Scripture emphasizes the importance of community in this journey. We were never intended to walk this road alone. God did not call us to be Lone Ranger Christians in this life. And so I want to close with words from Ecclesiastes that I hope you hear deeply in these verses, again, the invitation drawing us out of this dangerous combination of fear and isolation. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 12 says, Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one there to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one person keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. So as we close this week, may you know that you are surrounded by the presence of God as you go throughout your life this week. And not only that, but may God also surround you with others, even if it's one person that you can be vulnerable with that will help share the load in your journey. And finally, may God continue gently whispering into your life in ways that may not necessarily change your circumstances, but in ways that are changing you and are growing you in God's grace. Would you stand together with me as we pray this morning? God, you know, because you created us, that it is not good for us to be alone. And in certain seasons of our lives, loneliness and solitude and being by ourselves is good for a season. But we were created for community. We were created for relationship with you and with others. And God, we have seen over these last months what a volatile, dangerous, explosive combination fear and isolation can be. And because of it, in many ways, we find ourselves on the struggle bus. And we find ourselves maybe praying the same prayer as Elijah. I feel like I'm the only one. Has everybody else lost their minds? And so, God, we bring that honest prayer to you. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would work in our lives, even right now, to draw us out of our loneliness and our isolation and draw us into community and relationship. God, give us courage this week to seek someone out, to send a text message, to make the phone call, to set up the coffee date, to do whatever we need to do to maybe reach out to someone and to be vulnerable with them and to trust that probably we're not as alone as we feel and that there are others who are maybe walking similar paths, who are feeling similar things, and that you've placed them in our lives as a gift that we would not walk alone. God, we pray that you would help us during this time to lean into the body of Christ. You have created your church for this very purpose, that we were not called to be Lone Ranger Christians, but we were intended to walk together in this journey as brothers and sisters in Christ, rejoicing with those who rejoice, mourning with those who mourn, bearing one another's burdens. And you tell us that in this way, we fulfill the very law of Christ. So God, help us to lean on one another and lean on you. Search us and know us today and help us to take that next small step in growing closer in our relationship with you. It's in Christ's name we pray and all God's people said, amen. Let's worship together as we sing this morning.
thank you again for worshiping with us today. Uh, two quick reminders. Remember that you can give on your way out this morning if you're here in person. And also remember uh, that the opportunity to write letters to healthcare heroes is out there in Wesley Cafe if you would like to take a moment to do that. Uh, as you go, will you receive this benediction? May the love of God the Father, the grace of Jesus Christ his Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, both now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Sunday.